supposedly a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden took a television camera crew with him went into Osama bin Laden's hideout interviewed him and his top leadership and he came out and told everybody within three weeks Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel now don't you think that's kind of strange folks you see because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world with the biggest budget in the history of the world has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and can't find him some doofus jerk off reporter with a camera crew bosses right into his hideout and interviews him. and I'm telling you be prepared for a major attack but it won't be Osama bin Laden it will be those behind the New World Order. I wonder what Osama bin Laden's targets are supposed to be. And if they don't, you know, if this doesn't materialize in the next two or three weeks, it will eventually materialize because they haven't succeeded in getting the guns out of the hands of the American people, nor have they succeeded in taking our freedoms away. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. They don't believe that the public's really going to listen to me, and okay. so far that's, that's been true. There is a small group of people all over the world who are awakening, mm -hmm. who are beginning to understand that they've been living their life in fantasy land, and who are actively seeking the truth. But by and large, when when the secret power structure says, as I've put in the first chapter of my book, right out of one of their own technical manuals, that a nation or world of people who do not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence and thus are stakes on the table by choice and consent, they're absolutely right about the majority of people. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that, uh, that, that has been that illumination to me is that they're not always wrong mm -hmm. and many of their goals are the right goals but the method that they're using to reach that goal is the wrong method in other words if you set out to create a perfect world where there will never be any more killing but to reach that point you kill two billion people you have become what, what you're, you're trying, trying to avoid, you know. to avoid. Right. and uh, it can't happen that way. Mm -hmm. If you want to create a world of peace, it has to be done by Every people's peace, peace methods. Means. Yeah, if you if you murder someone to destroy a murderer, you have become what it was you set out to destroy, and thus it wasn't destroyed at all. It was perpetuated by that very action, and that's what these men are doing. They rationalize everything they do so that they feel better about it. Mm -hmm. But what they are doing is becoming what it is that they want to get rid of. And the world will never be a safe place for anyone as long as there are men who do these things. Very eloquently said. Thank you. Thank now, you. Your, your message to people, once again, is don't believe anything. How right. is it that the public can find this and you know search for this truth on their own if they can't believe anything or anyone what what can it's they all do? it's all in the public sector it's all available to anyone who actively and diligently uh, seeks it out um, everything that's that's in my book behold a pale horse is all everything in here all the documents that are in here mm -hmm. everything that's in this book is in the public domain. Can be substantiated? Yes, and I intentionally wrote this book not using anything that wasn't available to the public to show people that yes, if I can find this information, so can you. I have tons of stuff that's not available to the public. But as you can see by reading this book, you don't need that stuff because it's what you need is available to you. Uh, public libraries are, are, are overflowing with with the proof of what's really going on in the world, but nobody really utilizes it to the extent 
that they that they're able to pick this out and put it together. Another thing I've done for people is I've put it together for them so that they can see the overall picture, rather than looking at small um, things and, and thinking that it's isolated. Nothing is isolated. It's all part of a big puzzle, mm -hmm. and the puzzle is coming together. And when the puzzle is assembled, it's going to be a one-world totalitarian socialist government that nobody's going to like except the people that are running it. It's Hitler all over again. And the rationalization is, we're going to create the world without war. A utopia. The utopia. But they will never create that utopia because they're not dealing with the problem that makes them want to create it. And that is the inherent flaw in each individual human being that makes us do the things that we do. Until that's overcome, there's never going to be a world without war or without rape or without killing or without robbery. And anybody that thinks that there is has already gone off the deep end. So the method is, here, I'm going to hold a gun to your head so you won't rape, you won't kill. That's right. Very, yes, okay, I understand. The title of your book, Behold a Pale Horse, what significance does that have? What are you, what are you saying with this title? This title is, is from the book of Revelations, because I, I have to tell you this, and, and you may think I'm nuts if you want to, uh, but this is the truth. Either these men are following the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is, is, it is in, the, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They're either following it, just like a plan, and bringing the prophecies in there to pass to manipulate and control those who believe in those prophecies and neutralize them, so to speak. In other mm -hmm. words, uh, if this is written in the Bible and God has ordained it, who am I to resist? It must come to pass, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to stop it. Okay. What a perfect way to neutralize the opposition right off the bat. Or there really is a God. And what he said was going to come to pass is coming to pass. And I named this, Behold a Pale Horse, from uh, chapter 13 of the book of Revelations. The fourth horse, the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, is the pale horse. And I looked, and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat upon him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, and with the beasts of the earth. And that is taking place now today. The fourth horseman is riding across the world now. And the first realization of this massive, gigantic movement to protect the earth from this alien threat would be a one-world totalitarian socialist government. Mark my words, this is one this is only one of the contingency plans of those who want to bring this about and they have at their disposal the technology that has already been used for many many years to implant in the subconscious mind of the men and women the people of the world that the threat is real even though there is no proof anywhere existing upon the face of this earth or anywhere else that extraterrestrial beings exist, much less are visiting this earth. A mystery always holds sway over those who don't understand it. And the priesthood was born. No king ever existed without the permission of the priesthood. And I don't care what religion you're talking about or what period of history you're talking about, it is the truth. The kings never had the power, and don't to this day. Kings exist at the whim of the real power, which is the priesthood standing behind the throne. And when the king ceased to be a benefit to the priesthood, they would simply poison him, or get rid of him in some other way. The king is dead, long live the king, and there would be another king appointed. We knew that Governor Keating was ex-FBI. And we knew that he'd been groomed from a very early age for some political destiny. You see, he punched all the tickets. As soon as he graduated from law school, he went into the Federal Bureau of Investigation for only three years. And then into another slot, just for a short period of time. And then another one. Each 
increasingly more responsible, more respectable in the public eye, and higher up on the ladder. So this man was chosen to fulfill some destiny. We know not exactly what, but we know that this Oklahoma bombing has something to do with it. You see, it was Governor Keating who claimed to have found the axle two blocks away from the explosion site, the axle of the Ryder truck, which was instantaneously traced. Later, he began to back away from that, and they brought out a police officer who claimed that he was actually the one who found it. And now a book written seven years ago by Frank Keating's brother, Martin, has surfaced and everybody is vying and bidding to publish it. This book, ladies and gentlemen, tips the hand. They claim that it's coincidence, but it is no coincidence. You read the introduction to my book, you'll know that I don't believe in coincidences, especially coincidences of this nature. What is the nature? Oh, it's about a band of terrorists in Oklahoma. One of them named Tom McVeigh, who blow things up. And uh, this Tom McVeigh, in the act of getting away from one of his blowing up actions, is stopped on a highway in a routine traffic check by a highway patrolman. Now, Martin Keating and Frank Keating, governor of Oklahoma, you can tell the world that this is coincidence, but I'm going to tell you right to your face right this moment, that is the most incredible bullshit I've ever heard, and you must think that we are so absolutely stupid that the entire world is going to buy your fabrications. Go sit on it. Don't go away, folks. I'll be right back with a little bit of illumination. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm your host, William Cooper, tonight coming to you directly from Waco, Texas. Following the Randy Weaver episode, I predicted that the next target would be a larger, most probably a religious group. And I was right. When Branch Davidian was attacked, I stated that unless the American people rise up and stop this debacle, that they would all be killed, and they were. I further predicted that if they get away with this, it will escalate across the country, and the Constitution will be no more. President Clinton confirmed my prediction on April the 22nd when he said in his speech, quote, If anyone is thinking of joining a cult, or if you are a member of a cult, take this as a warning, unquote. Folks, you're next. <laughs> And the search for the truth continues in Waco, Texas. Kaji is here in force, folks. I'm here heading up a task force of our more experienced and our longtime investigative team members who usually do this kind of thing for a career. We are covering Waco, Texas and the surrounding countryside like a net. And nothing is going to escape our attention. I guarantee that. We have already uncovered a series of lies that began well before February the 28th, when the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms led their abortive and disastrous raid upon the church known as Branch. Division. We're going to let you in on some of our findings during this broadcast. And I'm telling you right now, folks, this is the last series of warnings that I can issue. I will continue broadcasting. I will continue bringing you information as long as there is life in my body. But this is the very last series of warnings that I can bring you. 
for the Constitution, for all intents and purposes, is already dead and buried, along with the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and everything else that this country was founded upon. We have discovered a pattern of operation by several agencies that tells us that they scrapped the Constitution of the United States of America a long time ago. And unless we stand up now as one united body of human beings across this country to reinstate that Constitution and that Bill of Rights, Round up all the traitors in this country, put them behind bars, and tie them for treason. This country is no more. Is no more. You see, I thought, and many others thought, that the Constitution was at least up there figuratively, that they had not really trashed it as a, as a gift. Well, I was wrong, folks. What we have discovered here in Waco, Texas, is that there is no Constitution, no Bill of Rights, no protection for individual liberties, and probably has not been for some time. So stay tuned. What you're going to hear tonight is going to amaze you, going to anger you. I hope it will spur you finally to some kind of action, and if this doesn't, nothing will. If this doesn't, nothing will, and if the American people don't take action against this kind of thing ever happening again, if they don't reinstate the Constitution and the Bill of Rights now after this, then I'm not going to keep up any pretense any longer that... Uh, that we're going to somehow magically save ourselves because if this does not stir America to action, nothing will. Nothing. There will be no action. All this talk about patriots rising up and, and uh, making sure that the Constitution stands is just talk. Fire coming from a lot of bullshitters all around this country. Because if it doesn't happen now, it's never, ever going to happen, folks. If it doesn't happen now, it tells me that the new world order has solidified so much of a propaganda advantage over the minds of the American people that the cause is already lost. The foregone conclusion that the new world order will be the power will be the power. When the President of the United States can make the statement that he is making, when a Senator, Deacon King from Arizona, can make the statement that he made on Larry King Live the other night, when the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Justice Department, and the White House can make the American people Listen to and believe the tremendous series of lies that they have perpetrated against the church of the French Union and against the Constitution and the American people. If they can do that, and if the American people can't even begin to see through it, even though every lie that they have told from the beginning they have reneged on, they have changed. They have proven themselves that they have been lying without any investigation by anyone even being needed to begin with. If they can pull all that off, then the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, is no more. The American people are farther gone than I ever believed in my wildest dreams, and this country is history. History. The New World Order is an established fact and is so powerful, both in its propaganda arm and in its police state, and in the fear that it is able to engender amongst the American people, that it's all over, all over. If 
All of those things that I have just outlined are true. It's all over. Anyone who tells you otherwise is a dreamer. A dreamer. And anybody who tells you that they're ready to stand up and protect the Constitution of the Bill of Rights by force of arms or any other means is a liar. Because they would have already done it. I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. What happens to me is of no consequence, and I knew that when I started this. And over the last 17 years, I knew that someday I was going to have to get up and say this whether I wanted to or not, whether I was afraid or not. Now I am here, and now it is done. And I feel an overwhelming relief. You now have the information. You can laugh at it, you can throw it in the trash can. You can burn my house down if you want to. But I am telling you right now, your future, your children's future, your grandchildren's future, depends upon what you do with this information. Your own government is selling your children drugs. And you don't seem to care. Your own government has given away the power of the people and you don't seem to care. There is an apathy that is running rampant in this country that is deadly. Whether or not there are aliens. We are truly now at this moment a nation of sheep. And ladies and gentlemen, I assure you that sheep are always led to the slaughter. But it does not have to be that way. There is tremendous power in knowledge. There is also tremendous power in secrecy. Take away that secrecy, you make sure that you're informed, and you can change things and stop fighting with each other. Thank you.